pro pro leagues, let's talk a little bit about some NWSL news that has dropped. Unfortunately, we have to talk about some injuries already coming out of preseason. Um, and you never like to talk about that kind of stuff, but it is news. Uh, Washington Spirit making the announcement uh, that Anna Helferty is going to be out for the remainder of the season uh, with an, after sustaining a knee injury, unfortunately. And Lisa, you and I actually were reacting to this mm -hmm. um, off mic a little bit. And we were just like this sucks man like just in a general like sentiment but you know obviously what it could mean for the spirit moving forward uh, we've been doing uh, we've been banking some content for everyone uh, in terms of preseason stick around for that it's coming we've got a lot of great previews team by team previews that are going to drop um and when we're when we're looking back on the preseason and the off seasons for some of these teams when we were talking about the washington spirit they were going to need to be like all hands on deck. Like every mm -hmm. single person that they had on their roster was going to have to like buy in because there's a lot of new things for the spirit moving forward, even though they've got this great kind of young core, whether, you know, it includes like a solid Eddie Sullivan or Trinity Rodman and Ashley Sanchez. There's, there's still, this is a roster that we were looking at over the off season that we wanted to make sure that they fleshed out the roster because it was one of the, the more narrow <laughs> rosters with personnel on it. So they've got a new head coach in Mark Parsons. They added new assistant coaches, technical staff, you know, Don Scott joining the side. Um, and we were like, great. This is, this just means that all of these other new additions are going to come in here and have a great foundation to, to sort of hit the ground running. But Helfrey yeah. is one of these players that has been with the spirit already, you know, and maybe this was a player that might not have needed a little bit of transition, you know, in terms of already having some pro league experience. And now she's not going to be available for this team moving forward. Heartbreaking. I'm truly heartbroken for Anna Helferty. I mean, this is a player that um, came out of college and was a forward and then got converted to be an outside back and was a tremendous outside back for Washington spirit. And then they would use her higher up the pitch. It was one of those situations where any game you would watch of Washington spirit, it was like, all right, where's Helferty going to play today? Is she going to be on the left? Is she going to yeah. be on the right? She's going to be in the front line, the back line. She's going to be more of a wing back player, really such a Swiss army knife for Washington spirit playing in 21 of their 22 games last year in 2022. And now um, to hear this and, and this news coming out in the early days of preseason for this year from Helferty saying that she would not be available to play all year. I mean, truly heartbreaking. And I think it's something that is really going to hurt a team like Washington Spirit. And, and we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get into the deep dive of the Washington Spirit preview for this year. But yeah. this is this has been a really consistent player for the spirit over the last couple of years. Um, and it's, it's just hard to see. She was on that NWSL championship team in 2021. Um, and, and she fought with them in 2022 on, on a, a year that wasn't the best for Washington spirit. Um, it's really, really hard to see and sad to see. I know as soon as you and I yeah. saw that news, I was like, no, Anna, like yeah. sad. I mean, I covered her when she was in college in Boston. Like I covered her collegiately. Um, that just a great player, but there's also a little bit of injury coming out of yeah. Orlando Pride as well. Another young player, right? Yeah. Well, that's also the really tough, tough thing about like kind of having to start the episode with yeah. kind of the injuries right off the back is that Carrie Lawrence is also out for Orlando Pride, um, uh, out for the season indefinitely, also with a knee injury. Um, again. <laughs> players younger players that you, you think are going to look at and say these are going to be the future of these particular clubs and franchises but now they're they're suffering these these injuries and they're going to lose out on a season uh you know of development with with their team so carrie lawrence another one of these pieces for orlando um and not not only that like we're talking about hefferty and how she's kind of versatile for for mm -hmm. the spirit but lawrence someone that they looked to to perhaps try to build up within uh, their defensive shape. Uh, but now they're going to take that next step in 2023 without uh, a player like this as well. Yeah, super sad uh, when you look at a player like Lawrence. Um, it contributed across the back line for Orlando last year. And this is an Orlando Pride team that's looking to build a little bit this year, continue to put those foundations down and have those building blocks. So it's just um, sad to see. So best wishes are with both of those players and every player dealing with injury and, and the road to recovery, it seems long and dark and scary, but it's faster 
And then you always think in the end of it all. So stick with your recovery. Um, listen to your doctors, something I never did. So please do that. <laughs> no, Lisa, no. <laughs> let's not turn this into one of those podcasts. Uh, no, uh, look, we wanted to like sort of just rip the bandaid off right before yeah. we went into to everything else uh, happening around NWSL. But let, we'll still stay with some Orlando Pride news, uh, but pivot to a, a little bit of difference. It's not injury related, but it is jersey related. So Orlando Pride recently announced uh, they've made some updates to the Luna Kit experience for Orlando Pride ahead of the 2023 season kicking off. Very, very cool of them to sort of acknowledge that people had a lot of feedback back on their initial Luna kit. It was cool. We talked to players about it when it dropped last year, uh, but it was tough to read on the games and on the screen. There was silver lettering, didn't exactly pop out, maybe perhaps in the way that they wanted to, but they changed up the, the, the lettering. They changed up the numbers, but not only that, they've also changed up the shorts uh, for the Luna kit experience moving forward. They spoke about the change to the dark shorts, saying, in addition to new numbers, we will become the first NWSL team to update to dark shorts due to period concerns continuing our investments in providing first class player experience and care uh vp Haley carter also saying improving performance and setting an example regarding inclusivity and accessibility to keep women girls and menstruating non-binary and trans athletes in sport matters so while this isn't the first club to uh you know feature black shorts or dark shorts with a kit uh, the very specific reasoning behind it, I think, is the first time we've seen a club in NWSL uh, talk about this particular reason. Um, we've also heard uh, Martha speak out on this new change as well. You know, this is someone who's been playing for a very long time, uh, both internationally and for various clubs around the globe. And she has mentioned how there have been moments, uh, you know, during her cycle where mm -hmm. she has felt like, you know, lack of confidence or, you know, going out there and playing in what could potentially be light shorts. So, you know, I love this from our I do too. I really do too. I mean, from a a broadcaster's perspective, I'm so glad they changed the numbers. We could never see what was happening. I'm going to be really honest right there. <laughs> <Not from Lisa. laughs> we could never see what was happening, uh, what players were doing what, just because of the coloring of the numbers on the back of the kits. Um, but uh, I love this update because of that. Now you can easily see the numbers on the jersey. And yeah, I mean, I like the dark shorts and I like that Orlando didn't try to sugarcoat it. They were like, this was specific player feedback that we heard about a lack of confidence or an it, insecurities or uncertainty playing in light colored shorts and we're not going to sugarcoat it this is why we made these changes we're uh, a women's professional league and, and we want to make sure that everyone whether they're non-binary or trans that is going through this feels like they can still play uh during that time of the month and i'm i don't know i liked it that's why i throw it threw it in the rundown today i was like this is cool that orlando's just being very honest and transparent about the changes to their uniform this year. And I like it. They also, yeah. the NWSL is also changing the way that they're mandating how uniforms must be. It doesn't have to be a white and then like a color. It just has to be a light and a color, um, which is different. So I'm really excited to see kind of what other NWSL clubs roll out with their kits this year. It's always yeah. one of the more fun things we get to do here. Like talk about kit fashion on the yeah. show. We love we love also this this phase of the season where it's like just close. It's still in preseason, but mm -hmm. it's still just close enough to the regular season where you'll you'll start to hear and see some of the new kits uh, drop a little bit. We talked a little bit about Houston Dash and their Estrella kit already, and now we're talking about these upgrades to the Luna kit for Orlando. So I'm sure we'll see more drop in, along the the pipeline. But I'm with you. It was cool to see that response from Nike as well. So I'm I'm hopeful for future kits. I don't know if this was uh, the change from Nike was was made in time to. To like maybe you know see that in 2023 but i hope we see some cool stuff this year and i i know we'll see some cool stuff uh next year in 2024 uh speaking of other cool stuff uh in the news some uh some sources have told insider gaming that nwsl will make its debut on fifa 23 so to shout out to all my gamers 
out yeah. there uh, who are, you know, really big on FIFA. Apparently, NWSL is going to come to FIFA 23 this month in March. Because happy March, everyone. It's officially March 1st. Uh, as our time of Yeah. Uh, so the fact that the NWSL is going to be included as a new mode as early as apparently, according to these sources, either March 14th or March 15th. So right within the next couple of weeks. Um, that is very cool. Uh, I, I'm excited to see uh, what that could look like. I'm also eager to see like <laughs> what it looks like because there was there was news around FIFA, the video game, um, you know, mm -hmm. talking about how EA Sports and FIFA are no longer going to partner with each other to, to produce these types of games. Uh, so earlier it said that, you know, FIFA, even though FIFA 23 is on track to become like one of their biggest titles in franchise history, that this is actually actually the last FIFA 23 or FIFA 23 is going to be the last title under that like decades long uh, gaming partnership between FIFA and EA Sports. So EA uh, Sports is actually going to rebrand. They're going to go to like EA Sports <laughs> FC. There's going to be more announcements to the game. So I'm curious to, to sort of see like how this looks. I'm, I'm grateful that they kind of figured it out and we're going to see NWSL and FIFA 23. So listen. I, I love that. I mean, first we get Sam Kerr on the cover of yep. FIFA 2023 or 23. And now we get NWSL teams coming into it. Um, I, I'm like so excited about this, honestly. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you before we we, we pivot to, to some things here. If if you uh, are you know you crack open that new that new game, right. you put it in your console, whatever you download it, whatever you fire it up. What is the first team that you're gonna choose to play with? In yeah, in I mean, Sander, you stole the words out of my mouth because I wanted to ask you this. I. Full disclosure, I don't play FIFA that frequently. I don't play video games that frequently. However, if I'm playing a video game, I'm playing FIFA uh, 100%. And I love to be the women's teams. I play against my fiance. Don't, full disclosure, don't really know what I'm doing with the buttons. But with NWSL and the teams coming out, I think the first team I would be is San Diego Wave or right. OL Rain right now. So right. the other thing is – and. Yeah, so that's those are the teams I would want to be right now. Right. What about you? If you're opening it, who are you going to play as? Come on, man. Look, you know I'm going with Chicago Red Stars, but I'm not that kind of player when it comes to FIFA 23. I mean, I'm, I'm going to fire up FIFA 23, you know, make sure I select Chicago Red Stars. And Tina Davidson is going to go on the most ridiculous going a goal scoring yes. in her entire life. Like, Tina Davidson is going to get, like, you know, 10 goals a game the, once, I change, <laughs> once I change the settings and, uh, you know, kind of go off on sickle mode there. But that's how I, I kind of that's on with FIFA. I, I'm not – I. I'm not like some folks, out, some gamers out there who take it very seriously, career modes and all that. You just like to have fun with it. Yeah, let me just fire it up and have a little bit of fun. And uh, well, we'll let us know, everyone that's joining us live, if you're listening as a podcast, if you get FIFA 23 and you play as an NWSL team, which club is going to be the first that you go to, the first that you're going to play as? Let us know in the comments on the live, um, on Twitter, just tweet at us. We, I want to know. I'm super curious. Yeah, me too. Uh, put a put a controller in the chat. <laughs> Let us know if you're if you're a gamer. Put a controller in the chat. We want to know.